I'm Dave D, and you're watching XP Team USA. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Holy moly! I searched in the lonely earth. Oh my God! I will be your Oh my God! How many? How many? How many years detective, Mr. Marsh? You see? Five, six. Five, six years. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. It's eight o'clock. It's Thursday, and it's Liverpool. No, no, it's not. It's Liverpool, the league champions. Ha! The big metal detecting show. There you go. A little bit of daftness to start the week. Hope you're all well. Uh, big night this evening. Joined the joining us this evening are two gentlemen from Celtic Stags Metal Detecting, Kieran Slade and Craig Hearn, who will be with us shortly. But before we do. We're going to share the screen and get straight into it. Uh, so, Mr. Higgins, if you will, we will share the screen. So, two new art news articles this week. Uh, sadly, you may have noticed that the Archaeology and Metal Detecting magazine page and the Big Metal Detecting show uh, have both been a little bit quiet. That's because I have been Facebook banned and I'm due back from jail tomorrow so uh <laughs> hence but my uh my good friends mr luke higgins uh lee hull and to to tombo brew have been putting some bits and bobs here and there so at least we've had some butts coming on so this week uh how amateur archaeologist hit jackpot finding a huge haunt of coins worth millions and i'll say millions because it's not really millions, is it? Uh, and it's about Adam Staples and Lisa Grace uh, discovering, along with uh, some other people, which isn't generally discussed uh, because they didn't want the um, the publicity, finding the Chew Valley Hoard, uh, which was 2,528 coins last year. 
and uh, it just goes on about about what we've all heard already but if you don't know the story uh, please give this website a visit it's the daily express and there's your headline and that was published yesterday second up and i've just lost it Duh. let me go back that's me press and click too quickly uh there we go detectorist andy hits a rich seam of discoveries after finding a medieval pope seal so uh, andy bassett found other treasures in a plowed field near bridge north after spending many months researching the site's history uh pope innocent the ivy ivy my fourth whose papacy began in 1243, used a lead coin-like object to confer political and religious favours on supporters. So there is that. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Some other bits and bobs as well. Uh, nice coloration, very similar to, uh, to Mike Smith's Iron Age finds down in Wales. And that's a high-status Roman brooch. So some, some beautiful th bits and bobs there. Uh, onto my little files over here, and I got sent a package this week. Here we go. This is from Graham Dempsey, a composite uh, cleaning pencil company. So, this is the pencil, as you know, using inserts to uh, to pick away at stuff. But these new little bits uh, actually go into the pencil, so you load them from the uh, the pencil end, and uh, fantastic little bit of uh, kit to be fair because we all use little picks and whatnot but these are actually um oh, i can't remember if the brass or the brass i think the brass uh and the you, you can obviously pick away at the lettering to reveal as much as as better as you can to get all that little hard bits off uh he's also developed another pit bit it's called the artifact cleaning powder and as you can see in this photograph you actually mix it with the, uh, the the compound that we the wax compound that he, uh, we've discussed in the past with him, and this makes it a little bit more, so you can get a lot more off. It makes it put a bit of grit into it. It's not not heavy duty. It's very light, and I'm probably getting my words wrong, but I'm sure you understand. And he's had some fantastic um, look at that, for instance, turning into that. Uh, it looks fantastic. Uh, this coin, uh, he utilised uh, that the, the the bits in the wax, and uh, this is the outcome of that A beautiful little coin as well. And uh, they're the finished products of some other coins that he's uh, used it on as well. So uh, obviously, give that a look up. His uh, his website is www.cleaningpencil.com, and you'll be able to see the full range. And I know that he's got a another um, thing in development at the moment. It's the last stage of development, so it looks very very <coughs> interesting. Things coming up uh, on the, there, so we look forward to that. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our guests. Uh, Celtic Stag Metal Detecting Group. I've only uh, got to know about them over the past couple of uh, weeks, uh, being inv in invited to their group on Facebook. Uh, so here tonight you have Mr. Kieran Slade and Craig Hearn. Good evening, gents. Good evening. How are you both? Good. Right, you right. Excellent. So could you tell me uh, a little bit about yourselves uh, and obviously a little bit about uh, the Celtic Stag Group as well, please? Well, where do you want to start there? Yeah? Start at the beginning. We formed a group quite a while back, actually. Um, before, actually, I met Kieran himself. Um, bit of a funny story, really. I actually jumped out on Kieran in the bushes. I thought he was detected on my perm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I literally jumped out to the bushes and died. What are you doing on my perm? And um, we met from there, really, and we just went on. It was just... Love at first sight, this one about it, oh, really. Right. But uh, we both got we both got sons with learning difficulties as well, so they went hand in hand. Um, uh, the club was formed then. Obviously, me and Kieran then, and me and Kieran decided then that we went on this journey together. And 
and the great believer in destiny, to be honest. And we went down to a certain part in uh, West Wales, where I drive, and we did a wild goose chase on first, but then um, we decided then that we'd stop at a certain time, and we had a bit of a detecting, and bang, we hit the mother of and the mother load being the bronze age horse and the gold mega and so, we've actually got the images so if uh luke if it's all right with yourself i'm going to share the screen again and we'll start looking at the uh the images and you can obviously talk us through it uh when it can yeah. go marvelous so first up uh this little beauty that was a very, very tricky one, that was, to be honest, because... <laughs> one was a story behind it. What it came about is uh, the farmer had let us go on another land that he had there. It was about two or three land, uh, fields over from where we found the bronze age hordes. Um, we dug up a bit of the ground and there was a tax. Well, the jeep got stuck, actually. Yeah. Huh. He said, let's not boys park here, and I said, I don't want to park here because I know the jeep is going to sink. And he's like, no, 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 park there, park there. So we said, all right, yeah, I parked there. And it got quite late in uh, January. The light beat us. And obviously then I said, if you can do me a favor, stand in front of the jeep, give it a rock. And here in the ground. Um, which you weren't too happy about. No. So we got the, we had the farmer down there to tow us out. We went back to that same spot the following day uh, because they just wrecked the field. But we patched the field. Huh. We thought, right, what we'll do, we'll have a little bit of a dig by you now and a little bit of a scan. And I kept having this really low signal. So what I did, I just kept going on like this. Ah, it's not going to be, it's not much. Um, so at that point, then we, I dug down to about three inches. And this little gold beauty then popped up over the ground and i lost it i literally Oof. lost it um because it like literally flicked over the ground yeah. but you were calling me yeah. because you had found um william III. the william the third uh mill toy so we were both battling he said no you come here i'll come in no you come here <laughs> <laughs> so i said just come over to me and he's like no you come here i was like no you come here that's all i think i found gold he said well i found it in the end, we just met in the middle. Of it. So we done as many tests as we possibly could ourselves. We tried burning it, we tried fighting it, uh, we tried sticking a magnet to it, but nothing worked. So we give it. We brought up my father's property, and uh, there's my father. I don't care. He said, yeah, right. Uh, we can test them like this. What he had actually done, he put it in vinegar for 24 hours. Not a very great thing to do. <laughs> um you only went to test with him being good and different acidic goes in outside. So we were furious, weren't we? So anyway, when we come back, I said is the gold goes not. So I think it goes. So we took it card with museum. Um they confirmed it was gold. But the best part about it was that when they done a, like micro on it, it actually been given it been given by it been worked. Which just next to that, there we actually found very dull about uh, top of that up was a smelting pit. Ah. At the same land. Um, so then that left us from there. Um, but we, to be honest, I to, I'll be honest with you, I went towards Cardiff, um, sorry, Wales and France, say, in the principal stadium. I had in my pocket going in over there. Um, <laughs> not really. A bit of good luck, but didn't work because we lost. Um, <laughs> and we did lose blood, but as I say, but that's the end of the story, more or less, because we got in, we parked up, the farmer came down and said, Any chance we can go on your land? Um, yeah, he said, You can't go over here. He said, Because of my sheep. I said, Yeah, it's absolutely fine. So we went from here then into the first view. Excuse me. Um, we went up and you were just finding nothing really to be honest nothing there was nothing really there a significant but we generally thought that it 
it actually been done really, really somebody's been amateur. Yeah. And it turns out that Kieran actually picked up a bronze age jet. A casting jet. A casting jet, which he went to throw in the in the street. But he kept in his pocket. Um so we tell you don't go in, I think what time is it then? But when you come across it, yeah, when you come across four, yeah, but about four. So when no daylight is actually catching up with us, so we would dig in. Now, literally, Kieran had the signal there. Um, I've always had the mindset you never know what's under that ground, you can't, you physically can't tell. You can get, you can get certain signals, will give you certain idea, but it was a, a wide variety of different signals that was literally bouncing up to the ground. Um, so we dug down, I gently dug a, a nice plug, popped it out, and the first thing that hit me was a bronze age jack. And so, I, go on. What machines uh, were you, were you actually using when you found the gold nugget and right. obviously the start of the, the Simplex? Yeah, the Simplex. Thanks to Dilek and their ingenious ideas and alleged promotion. Yeah. <laughs> it was, so anyway, we decided then, so I generally thought, well, on my first instinct, I generally thought that somebody had literally had planted them there as if they'd done like a, a medieval roadway battle or yeah. something along their minds because they looked, they were so, so pristine conditions. Well preserved, very, very well preserved. So then we went, when we pulled them out, as you can see there. They'd be from the second, uh, second hole, they come out of the second hole. They were right, up. so you've actually had two Bronze Age hordes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Well, if I go through the, the photographs, uh, if you could obviously describe everything, explain the, yeah. the, which is which, what belongs to, to which horde, this would be great. So this is the second horde. So this right. was found, obviously, later than the first one. How much later was that found? The day after. The day after. <laughs> really? <laughs> Nine and a half, exactly nine and a half for the path. Yeah. Um, after, after literally within that time, within that uh, time scale, my wife Laura was doing a lot of research and on the bronze days and etc. Um, their force was literally around about that time. From yeah. That time. Yeah. And for everything that I can't go into much detail for you today, but uh. We were literally, um, there we are, as you can see over there. The, when we went with the archaeologists over the ground um, and they got the geophysic, we found a lot more there. Right. Um, just to let you know, there is treasure still in the ground. We just yeah. COVID uh, for a stop. COVID for a stop, wasn't it? But right. As you know, there's a lot of suffering going on in the world. So, um, we decided to postpone our on and on mm -hmm. to the work. But so is is this what we're looking at now? The entire collection of the the two days no, finds. No, no. no. The, these are the ones that are in the museum. The other stuff are obviously still in the ground. That's up there, see? Right. Well, well, this all right. This is what's been taken out of the ground up to this point. Yeah. 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 Right. There are other things that the reason why we haven't displayed them is because we got to get them to the museum, lock them. It's like um, blade sword fragments, uh, about 200. See that oh, one yeah. today, now that one is up on the street. That is the first casting jet Kieran found. This was the one he was going to throw in the stream. That's yes. the famous one, yeah. Um, <laughs> if you actually look at the image, Dave, there, you can see there's like a bit of a really, uh, like a gold looking color behind this. Right, yeah. The archaeologist, uh, first said it was, his first said it was gold, didn't he? Yeah, because he weighed it against another captain jet which is a lot bigger um as you can see just behind that photo there you can see the trading disc as well is that that one there that's yeah. a trading disc yeah yeah which were absolutely the soft device really because well, they said that back back in them days that disc there that that would be the equivalent of millions in today of wow. the currency of, of trading you know because they would have used that then, that disc, they would have taken from settlement to settlement to settlement in order. Yeah, I'm with you. Or an emergency, basically. You could smell that down. Bump. Now, yeah. you can see the cloak pin there. That's the, the long one, yeah? 
Absolutely. Yeah, that was that was actually complete when it came off the ground until uh, a certain archaeologist broke it. No. Oh. Yeah, and it's the only one to ever be found in Britain. Wow. And we've obviously got spear heads. We've got, uh, yeah, I take it that's a smaller axe head, the other axe heads as well, and then talks at the bottom. That's a chiseling tool, that one, Dave. Sorry? That's a chiseling tool. Oh, right. Ah, yeah. yes, sorry, yes, sorry, it is, yeah. We've got a chiseling tool, but what we did find when we opened one part of the ground, there were 17 axe heads, all going from an inch. Six inches all starting each other. Wow. So the the uh, the Russian dolls of Bronze Age axe heads. Basically, yeah. yeah. Very, very precise. Very, very precise. Wow. Um, so and do the archaeologists think that that particular find was made to be like that? That's actually something that was created to be like that. It's baffled them really because the way they came out of the ground, the manner they came out is is, is baffled them really because it's it's not something they normally expect when they when they deal in with stuff like that. You know, they were a bit uh, they were a bit dubious. Yeah, yeah, they were yeah, very yeah. confused. They wanted soil samples as well, so we went back collected soil samples from the proper chair and scratch up. It was very because in fact. Uh, I don't know if I can mention the archaeologist's name. Can I mention the archaeologist's name? Dave? You, yeah, you, of course. It's down to Ken yourselves. Murphy. I thought you were asking Karen, sorry. No, oh. Ken Murphy was, is the director of David Archaeology. Yeah. So, David, Ken and Diggy on the area is where we found it. Um, around that area, but Ken Diggy was a past so, so, all the people. You're not going to find it before you think about it. <laughs> um, but his wife rang me at half past 11 at night. There we go. You got there. See that there? Back that image back there, did Yeah. But all them acts said, so they were the ones rolling inside each other, didn't they? Yeah. yeah, that's for the, the second hole. Yeah, that was the second hole that came out. And it's right. back um, Is it the salt that it might be? Yeah, I think that. This is obviously where there was all on the table. This is part of the. Uh, and like yeah, you literally was sat there i'm not kidding you with a book and he was flicking through this book in his hand and he was going across and he was going across and he was like i said excuse me i said just come on come on i'm just trying to see what we got and you haven't got he's like the younger that the younger that the younger that the younger that <laughs> and the woman sorry the other archaeologist that was with him this lady she started crying in the kitchen I generally thought you'd had a bad day at work or something. I was like, why are you crying? Because <laughs> I've never seen anything so beautiful. They normally get the opportunity. Wow. So you have to add you know, you don't get the opportunity to see them first hand, you know? Yeah. So it's an experience for them as well, I suppose. As the, as the horde actually got a name, obviously, every horde that we come across is given a, a term, a name. Has this actually got a name? Yeah. For, in the museum? Cool. The first horde of 2020, and, and then the first, the second horde of 2020. No, I mean, like in the sense that the Staffordshire horde's called the Staffordshire horde. Um, the Keradigion horde. Keradigion. Oh, it's one of them words that I should be able to spell. Well, well, that'll well. do. So while I'll try and do during the, the adverts at half past, I'll, I'll have a brief look and see if I can come up with uh, any of the museum images that obviously show these today. So You won't, uh, get, them, you won't get them yet. Um, no, no, okay. Obviously because of lockdown and um, I only really wish that if they were. As yeah. you know, when we went to the museum, I literally went into the, went into the room and it was full of people are like well all these people end up there but I knew Mark Lefick and I was speaking to the curator from the museum Adam Grill at that time. Um there was all these other people in there because they all was fascinated. Obviously you got you got the armlets there as well. Now the armlets when we pulled them up the ground they linked together. I still wow. yeah, no, they, they were still linked. Wow. They were placed and what are these items? Uh, there's this one sort of centre to right. What's that item and the one below here? I don't actually know what that was, to be honest. 
Um, can you get a zoom in on that later? Um, I was actually trying to a minute ago. Uh, let me see. Resize. Let's try. Uh, No, that's uh, that's just going to be a pain in the arse. Again, I'll I'll sort something out yeah. during the break and uh, come back to that then. Because there was a spoon, there was. We found this. Um, it looked like a, a giant bear, the armlet there. Uh. They were all actually linked in order from the biggest to the medium to the smallest. Yeah. And I remember actually showing my father and he was trying to put one on his wrist. Probably a bit. He said, can I keep this? I said, no, you can't keep the, you said, you can't keep the bloody thing. I said, if it's going to go to the museum, but well, surely it wouldn't be fun. He said, they go with the museum, now. He said, you cannot have them. It's as simple as that. But overall, we just, we, would, we just didn't know what to do with it. It was a, a shock in the system, but then at the same time, it was, is this real? Mm -hmm. Is this real while I got my hand? Because the, Tin holes either side of the spear head themselves. They, they just look they like as if they were laser. Like, yeah. Literally, they just generally look like the they precision. look too good to be true. The, you know, the, the way they were made, you swear they were from the ground yesterday. Yeah. The, the, the preservation on them was unreal. That's what baffled the, the archaeologists. They were like, how were they in the ground? How were they prevented? Now, I will tell you for you now, the spears were facing north, east, south, and west, forward. They weren't in any rush to bear you know? No, they weren't. <laughs> they were placed in there for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you, I went home that, that following night, and I sat in my wife and I cried my eyes out. I'd, I'd probably do exactly the same myself. It's... Um... It's it's one of those things that you just uh, unless you actually have 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 been there like it's yourselves, uh, there's just nothing else you could do, is there? It's uh, <laughs> no, we, we it's gobs it's it's mind blowing. It is. We it, went up there on the on the impression we were just going to get a couple of nice coins, hopefully, you know, and we did. Yeah. Uh, we did get a couple of nice silver coins, but. Didn't expect anything on that scale anyway, for sure. No. I just Absolutely. spoke to somebody, just put a comment that saying it was illegal to have two old before me. That was. <laughs> but the problem is, is that when I actually phoned the, I phoned the flow, and I was like, what am I meant to do with all these artifacts? Take them up. Take a moment. Uh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I didn't want to. No surprise with that. We really did. The farmer came up. Right, the market with you. Said to the farmer, come in here and have a look at this. And he literally went in and yanked an axe head up. And I said, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I said, his arms are like shovels. Yeah, you got the axe head up. And um, I said, that's another sheep tail. That's what that is. And that's basically it. We did find something on the land. Go on. Well, it was uh, <laughs> on Dom Rafa we found in one of the fields. <laughs> and it's not even with a sheep on the land. So, you, you know, it's the old uh, famous Welsh saying goes. So. Literally, it was a direct Rafa. Kieran picked it up in the in the signal. I didn't think it'd come up on the detector mines on the land, but. <laughs> <laughs> we generally didn't think that would come up on a detector. Yeah. Um, but we were like, he hasn't got, uh, he hasn't got, I want to call it, a, a, a girlfriend, a wife, and I think it's the same, the sheep and the dog. Just that was a sheep thing. Um, well, okay, okay. <laughs> but um, it was just, I looked at Kieran Kane, looked at me, and I go, let's not even mention this to the farm. Let's just, just, yeah. let's just, I did, let's just go. Uh, but working alongside the archaeologist, to be honest, was absolutely brilliant. I really, really enjoyed that part of it. I think most people who've actually worked alongside archaeologists um, post a find of consequence, like uh, Addicted to Bleeps, he absolutely loved it. 
uh, the whole process and following it through. Mike brilliant. Smith as well loved what he found, the, yeah, the Celtic I, chariot working yeah. through with the archaeologists. So and and they've all said similar. Shout out to Mike there because actually I've spoken to Mike since and he's, guide, he's actually given us some good guidance really yeah, he did. Um, on what the trust what uh, to expect and what to expect. The process of it all. And but it was um, just be careful um, et cetera, et cetera. But what yeah. we've got by massively now, David, is that my white cousin is the head archaeologist in Nottingham. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, he got in touch with um, the Welsh Museum um, and Kerry Big Young. Uh, got in touch with Ken Murphy himself. And they managed to sort uh, a plan out, basically, where it would suit us all. Um, I really enjoyed watching the way the process is. I was quite nervous, mind, when they were taking out one of the pits. Um, we literally got down to the glacier level, if you want, if you want to say. Yeah. Quite rapidly. Um, what happens then, all of a sudden, you have this dark patch of show in the ground. And the doctor just said, that's it, yeah, you go through the soil. And he said, this is what, um, this is what we are looking for. Which they found a post hole in the ground. Right. To show that obviously somebody had been there. Then there's a mound. I can't say too much because it would give it really, really give it away. Obviously, um, obviously. So I take it. Certain, I take it that ongoing. the yeah, it's ongoing, and now with COVID nineteen occurring, obviously, shut down yeah. in the world of archaeology. As soon as that's up and running, they've got to put a plan in place and uh, test pits, excavations, etc., etc. Yeah. Um, I, I, did you say they've done the geophys already? They've done the geophys. Um, so that's down, I think that was only to a certain extent. Yeah, it was only because it seemed to it. It was belt thinned up. Yeah. Um, literally belted up. Very temperamental machines. The data proof plan that we said the archaeologists had to remove and record all the data. Um, yeah. Yes. They will do that. Um, but what, the only thing that disturbed me, Kieran was in Poland, believe it or not, all day <laughs> on all day. They did beg you completely to stay, but it was planned for a long time. It was before we became very good friends. Um, so we went off. My wife then, Laura, jumped in and I gave her a detector. She had the two of the detector, mate. And she had some good, good finds, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> As you know, somebody that we get us, we just dig away. Dig away. Yeah. So we also found cooking stones. Yes. I was throwing them in, in the street. Really? Yeah, the archaeologist came over, Laura decided, oh, what's this? He said, a cooking stone, we can find that. Oh, well, my husband just found the Lord and just put them in the street. Yeah, so I was in there, I was fishing them out. I was fishing them all out for him, and. Uh, he was like, so you explained to me what they would use them for, like quartz, for instance, and things like that. They would boil the quartz, put that in water, and they, instead of boiling water and fire, they would use them for very clever, mystical properties. And like you've got salt and quartz and different things. So you imagine it quite healthy people, stock people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a very, very intense and a surreal moment in itself. Uh, is it real? Is it not real? Is it? It's just uh, not something we expect to find the day we here. No, you don't. But then, not on that scale, like I always say to people that they would say, oh, I'd love to find gold, I'd love to find it. You will only find it if you walk over it. Absolutely. Totally agree. Oh. Sadly, uh, I've got big feet, so I just keep walking over everything and missing it. <laughs> but the way we look at it is like this, right? Is that. Um, so I look at it like this in the, in, the, in the format where anybody with a, you can, based on fishing for instance, Dave, you can sit at the river with a five pound fishing rod, you could be sitting up there with a 70 pound, uh, 70 pound fishing rod, um, it's at that right spot at the right time. I can still hold the salmon on the end of a five pound fishing rod, you could be sat up that end with a 70 pound fishing rod. I'm not catching all day. And I'm yeah. asked with my five pounds scabby telescopic fish. Not, I admit, right? Off I go. 
And obviously you've got the depth and everything else to account for, but he or will not that people. Yeah, yeah. But what the simplex actually did do was they were such a such a useful tool in itself. We were able then to go with the simplex. Now a big big shout out to Leisure Promotion um they live from the Mark for instance because they helped us on our journey by giving us better equipment. The, for instance, the two month pulse light, two month absolutely beautiful bit of kit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think you'll ever get a better pinpoint on that actually. Mm. The battery lights are phenomenal. The yeah. same with the simplex, the simplex, the battery lights, is it, it, it's why it lasts for hours and hours. Yeah. For instance, yeah. me and Kieran, like, when we go in the Jeep, we plug it into the cigarette right there and we charge it on the go. By the time we get to where we go in, bang, we go for a battery. Absolutely. I plug it in for an hour and I know I get about four or five hours each of it. Don't yeah. Go. yeah. Well, listen, gents, I'm going to, uh, Luke's going to take us to the break now and we'll be back uh, shortly afterwards and uh, continue the chat. So uh, we'll see yeah. you all momentarily. Thank you very much. And we are back. Uh, a couple of bit more that I didn't mention at the start of the show to uh, to give you a brief overview of. Uh, firstly, you may have noticed some new videos. Uh, thank you for them to Big Finds, Small Finds, who will be coming on in a few weeks' time uh, as guests. Uh, also, um, 
Detectacon. Uh, there are not many tickets available left available uh, for next year's event via Scotty B's um, North of Time Metal Detecting. Uh, so if you Google Detectacon, if you are interested in the event in Northumberland in July, then you'll find more information on that. Um, da -da 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 -da. Uh, love Kev Marchese's gold coin. Love his find, absolutely. But that reaction looked like he was going to cry. And I've never heard anybody say holy moly in about 400 years until I heard Luke say it then. Um, Detector Network have now had 1,000 sign ups. So congratulations uh, to Scott on that. And uh, hopefully we'll see that app be cleared sooner rather than later. Um, <clears throat> A big shout out to Diggers Dips. As you know, last week's guest, um, the prize draw website. And as you know, my luck isn't the greatest. So I added some money to my account and was entered into the free prize draw, uh, which was nice. But I also entered several other prize draws. And uh, <laughs> Saturday night, I won and received courtesy of of themselves and this gentleman here at lp i received a nice garrett carrot uh, a delightful garrett fine bug and an absolutely stunning and very heavy you won't see it greatly but a black ada sod buster so i'm looking forward to getting them that out and about sooner rather than later and that i thought was my luck until the free prize draw took place and lo and behold what an absolutely stunning and fantastic book this is and of all the time periods uh, this is volume two of all the time periods that i'm interested in and i find sexy the middle saxon and viking era finds and there are some truly fantastic images in here from swords uh, to strap ends, absolutely all sorts. So uh, thank you to Diggers Dips uh, for uh, <laughs> drawing my numbers. That was fantastic. I was uh, very shocked when um, Chris Bailey texted me to say, you lucky so-and-so. He didn't say so-and-so. But then again, Luke only says holy moly uh so i think that is uh all the updates done uh, again thank you to all and sundry on there uh into the chat room briefly uh hello evening to nick west darren booth of history unearthed who also says if i go down to the bottom when he found his roman republic coin hoard he helped the archaeologists remove and record all the data and it was a great experience uh, hello to Bob Hope, Stephen Pettigrew, Adrian Gayler, Jamie Evans, Graham Dempsey, William Hargreaves. I haven't forgot William to put you in communication with Tom. I'm just having a nightmare at work. Uh, to Aaron Weedle, Diane Cottrell, Chris Williams, Detector Network, Dean Robertson, Simon Fortone Searcher, Graham Stokes, Keith Holden, uh, South Coast Detecting, Dirt Diggers UK. Tony K. Ward, Scotty B, Tom Trussell, Jeff J, Chris Williams again, Laura Hearn. Good evening, Laura. You're the wife that keeps getting mentioned. <laughs> uh, you're going to have to pop your nose in, I think, and let and say hello publicly so we know who you are. Adrian Dale and Anthony Dale. Sorry, I do apologise. So anyway... Let's get back to it and back with uh, Celtic Stag. Uh, and there's Kieran. Hello, Kieran. Is he uh, dragging? I thought you. I thought you were dragging Laura in then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna move. We're gone. <laughs> no, Me I'm... too. Me too. Uh, so, what did? No, yourself. Carry on. Um, as I say, it. Um, yeah, big shout out to Digger Dips for what they're doing. Absolutely brilliant uh, format and the way they. Danny always has been great. Um, also, a big out shout out to Paul Ryan, the developer. Um, myself, Kieran, and Laura are going to be working with Paul Ryan. Um, we're going to be bringing something to the Mad Detecting world. 
but it's literally going to change the state of that pressure. Literally. You you mentioned this off air before. Obviously, we can't talk about it uh, no. as such as yet. But no. uh, I, I've asked you to keep me obviously updated with that, so we can uh, we can obviously bring you back on the show in the future and, and see what's no. going on there. Uh, what's his name? Do do apologise for a moment. Uh, Alan Kopitko uh, said the sound quality is really bad on your behalf tonight. Is there any chance you can move a bit closer to the to the mic? Oh, look, he's getting Kieran out the shots. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a little bit better. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I think that's, that's the be, best we're going to get. If I shout, they end up having a deep voice. <laughs> uh, Richie Goodchild says, Hi, Dave. Loving the interview. Very pleased for Craig and Kieran. Don't know Kieran yet, but Craig is a great guy. Well done again, guys. i just got to give a shout out to Richie for that because... Early on in my mad attacking career, somebody broke into my Jeep and stole my son's car. And all the trainers of Richie, I was trying to look for it on, on uh, Facebook, and he actually inboxed me, said, Come down and he give my son uh, a car at the 250 pounds bank in there. Fantastic. And that's what it's all about being there for each other and helping each other out. So, uh, Sad, sad situation nonetheless. I know uh, Alex Savage down in South Wales himself uh, yeah, had an yeah, item stolen. And uh, Alex actually uh, somebody came actually. And look, yeah. Pleasure. And the other glasses, I he was like this. And I said, What's the matter with you, Alex? I've just never seen so much pleasure. And that's a guy who's actually assisted on the uh, Pompeii excavations mm. and such yeah. like so yeah. madness uh but he had something stolen and he trolled the internet all these uh facebook sites and what have you and he actually found uh the person who'd stolen whatever it was and um he went there so uh i can't remember the exact outcome of that but uh, i've got a package myself to send to add um to alex this weekend which i keep forgetting to do because i'm lazy but that will be sent this weekend and it's not even metal detecting there you go so uh Adrian Gayler, that's uh, a question that I'm, I was going to ask. Why the name Celtic Stags? Stags is a very mystical animal. A stag is goes back to the Druid, basically, if you look back in time. And it's just a Welsh... Stags are for... It's just a Welsh thing, really. We could have gone with the Welsh emblem, for instance, but we can't copyright the Welsh flag or anything like that because it belongs to... Charles, so we went with a stag, and it, it just looked good. It just it's just a um, and funny enough, myself and Kieran, we were down in Van Dilo, um, which we got the Roman Walk Rally coming up on the 8th and 9th of August. And we actually literally we were on the phone to Paul Ryan, actually, to the developer, and two stags which was out in front of us, yeah. couldn't have timed any better. But it's just something that is very mystical. I don't know, it's a mystical and it, it just fitted right for our country. As we are a separate country to England. Yeah, yeah. And it's a good uh, name. And it's obviously, given the uh, the explanation, obviously gives it a whole new understanding for myself. Uh, I'm, I'm going to bump back into the chat room for one moment. Yeah, good yeah. evening, Gary Brun. It's a pleasure to have <laughs> you here. Uh Absolutely loved you on the, the, the programme, uh, which names alludes me for the Heritage Hunters. I can't remember what it is. I've lost track of everything. But, Gary, I'd love to bring you onto the show in the future if you would be uh, willing to. That would be fantastic and talk all about uh, yourself, uh, metal detecting, and uh, the country of your, your current living. That would be great. So, uh, Gary Braun, fantastic. Nice to have you here. Uh, Adrian Gaylor says, The Celtic Dragons. Now, now it's just you, you're just trying to change the name. Celtic Stags is fine. Stop it, Adrian. No, leave him alone. Give us a lord, man. Please, Four dunces. Four dunces. It was. Thank you, Gary. Right. I will. Uh, I will communicate with you via inbox at some point in the near future and uh, uh, try and sort out a date for you to come on. We're here every Thursday night at eight pm, and it'll be an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Um, anyway back to celtic stags so 
What's next? Obviously, you've got something in the pipeline which we're not going to discuss, which you haven't even told me off air. But I might find out if I uh, pinch you hard enough. So what's next for Celtic Stags? What what else is there going on in the near future? What we got with Celtic Stags, I mean, we've just, bought, we've just um, been involved with a company called Reban Tactic. And there's some days when they bought it, actually. In the pink, dig into it. Now, I tested the other one myself. Um, literally. Mm-hmm. I got up in there. No, well, I'll tell you what, what I'll do while you're talking about uh, Raven. Um, Kieran sent me some images before, so I'll I'll scroll through the images while yeah. you talk. So, Luke, I'm going to be sharing the screen again, please. That would be fantastic, I even though you're on the website. With their gloves as well, which are brilliant because. You get it from the camera there. You see the tips here? The leather on the end. Right. There so is. there's nothing worse than, for instance, you're putting your hand in the ground and all of a sudden then you get a little bit of a tin or a bit of glass trying to pin you in the finger. Um, yeah. But with these ones, and also actually it's got a cushion on the back here, which is a nice touch there really because mm. there's nothing worse than you digging down or something and a crack in the back of your hand. Yeah. Um, right. Could you let me know? Is is I've uh, I've got the images up and I'm sharing. So can you see the image that I've got up currently? No, no. We just the screen's just on us a minute. There, right. there we are. Oh, oh I've stopped sharing now. Right, I'll I'll try again, Luke. Uh, sharing again now. As soon as you pop that up, I'll go back to the images. Fantastic. So there we go. That's the Raven, the Raven detecting uh, string oh, drawback. Very well made, actually. They double stitched on hems as well. Yeah, uh, it's got some uh, nice back. leather or something similar, faux leather yeah, on the corners, the corners too. Yeah, yeah. Now, nice touch. With that bag, there, that comes free with if you purchase one of the digging tools. Right, I'm with you. If we got a promo code, actually. You actually got this. We got this in front of us for you. This will be a finds box. But if you look inside there, you can actually see the dimples inside. Yeah. Where obviously when you when you wet your coins and you want to have a good feel of them to see what you got, normally your coins get stuck to the bottom. Yeah. But with these, obviously, it's because it's raised out to the ground, but they don't. They actually we, we tested it earlier on. Yeah, they did work mm. very well. They work, but it doesn't open up that way. Either. It just opens up. Two seconds there. Oh, back again. Clicked it opens twice. that way. It's double sided. Mm. Um, you can use the promo code with just for this is not biased, but for Celtic Stags 12, and you get 12% discount from them. It's a nice little um, piece. It so, on this image, we've got obviously the fines box, we've got the gloves, which you've, uh, you've mentioned, and they do look uh, a nice pair of gloves. Sadly, yeah. with with me, is it a one size fits all, or is no, there a no. range of sizes? I they do small, sizes. medium, and at large, and at large. Right. You see, I have an issue. I work for a well known British engineering company, and uh, size ten gloves. Yeah. Uh, nowhere near me, but the size eleven gloves, which everybody they don't have many of, because nobody's. Uh, uses them uh they're the only ones that fit me <laughs> so obviously given the range of sizes that'll be fantastic as well and then of course we've got the um the, the trowels also but that's it it gives the i know it's just a handle but the handle appeals to the ladies of the sector yeah and they are bringing out a range for they bring out the same type of glove but for children for kids yeah i'm with you um so what we've got we've got to look at it but if, say for my son and Kieran's son, where he says, uh, and what's this one I'm looking at now? I can't see it. There. That's the jacket, actually. That's the the jacket. Camo jacket. All right, Windows. that's not camo, that's Minecraft <laughs> digital print. Then, all right, <laughs> um, no, it's uh, the digital print on it is it's actually really comfortable, actually. Yeah, now, yeah. the company have actually spoken to. 
the director of the company. And as, as you mentioned earlier, you brought up CC Pens. Yeah. They're actually coming on board with Celtic Spark. Brilliant. As well. Um, and like I say, back again to bigger dips. Um, Chris has done a brilliant job in bringing it all out and the idea. Yeah. Um, really promoting it, etc. Um, we have just so we just donated now from we donating one hundred and eighty pound to the autism charity. Fantastic. So everything you see on there now, Dave, in front yeah. of you, you get twelve percent discount if you join Celtic Stags Club only. Right, I'm with you. So that's obviously the Facebook group. Yep. Yeah. Um, Paul Ryan is in the uh, middle of developing. Um, our, we have got a web page here which talks a lot about autism charity because that's a charity we sponsor because that's close to my heart and it's close to you as well. I totally uh, understand. Yeah, yeah. So there is not a, no disrespect to going over the bridge with England. England have got a lot of funding for it. Ways have mm. um, For instance, my son has got to share a one-to-one -one teacher with another child and he can't get it. He yeah. can't. It just proves to show now, like, can he's got one to one? That's something with corner. They, they couldn't provide the corner in, in different areas. That's right, yeah. That's as well. It, a lot of more money needs to be put into it to facilitate these different schemes and different schools. So, and also, we've been approached by um, the Welsh schools in Wales, plus the Welsh school clubs in Melbourne as well, which is something that we are going to be doing. Yeah, I, uh, I I helped out at me. Well, I, I done a, a few things at my son's uh, school of beavers last year, uh, where when the beard was was purple, I was Captain Blue Beard, and I buried uh, numerous. Well, actually, I got a load of modern two peas, sprayed them gold. Knew how many kids were going to be in the class. Yeah. Buried the first um, clue, and they had to follow the clues and the maps, uh, and until they found the 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 final treasure. Um, sadly, I couldn't find one or two of the clues. <laughs> I forgot where to put them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, there's nothing worse. The, the, well, the second one that I've done for the beavers, it was better pr planned, and uh, obviously, I I made it more obvious as to where things were. So, uh, right, right. it's it's great to work with the kids. They absolutely loved it. It, it was mad yeah. having 25 kids, but I give them all a go with the machine. Mm -hmm. Uh, the teacher was beside themselves. And even the Beavers, uh, which you might want to look at Beavers and Clubs as well, they yeah, were yeah. absolutely loved it so much that they arranged to go to the local museum and they'd done a night there. So uh, oh, yeah. it was great to be involved in all of that. So, yeah, very, something very close to my heart too. And, and obviously, yeah. Ar Archeo Boy in the back room there, he's uh, well into it. In fact, Archeo Boy, we went to a car boot sale uh, last weekend Dad, Dad, come and look, come and look. And there was a guy with multiple old coins on the table, uh, coins that me, you, everybody's got loads of in our boxes already. But he was absolutely astounded. I said, Mace, you can't buy them. I've got hundreds at home. They're yours. Just, you know, when you want them, you can play with them, you can have them, you can do what you want with them. He made me go back to the stall about half an hour later, and then the guy gave him a book because he was that interested. And uh, it, it's it's now mine. It's called The Archaeology of Weapons by R. Hewitt Makeshot. And it is so good. It's like a late 70s uh, publication. But the images and the information in it is astounding. So uh, good ploy by the boy there. <laughs> Car boot sales, you can't beat them. The future of metal detecting is done to the next like generation. The children, yeah. It does indeed. So, mm. um, well, I don't know if you, I don't know if your children would be interested and be able to to do it. Dig Ventures, I've mentioned it numerous occasions over the past couple of weeks. I myself, Tony Kaywood, and Adrian Gaylor, that I definitely know of, we all participated in the six week how to do archaeology course, uh, which was totally free and it was absolutely brilliant for for me. I thought I knew archaeology and it just took me in a total, total different direction of knowledge. But this weekend, if you sign up to it, there's a family one. Uh, I'll find it in a minute and we'll be able to show the images. But if you sign up for the dig, this particular dig ventures, here we go. So, Luke, can you go into the courses area, please? Here we go. 
And uh, if you scroll down, this artist was in the acting lot when Dave was on the trip to Team Lift. Yeah. And he said that's something. Right. Like stop. Stop there. Stop there. That's what we're looking for. Vi virtual field school for families. Free to go on to. Free to do. Archaeology just isn't for adults. This course is for kids and teens who want to be archaeologists of the future. So, you know, try your own kids with that. Obviously, it's a byproduct of metal detecting and he may learn or get so much more interested. Uh, it's uh, something I'm looking forward to doing with him this weekend myself. So, can't wait. Luke's on it already. Get Bonnie and Nelly on it. <laughs> well, you look so, uh, Really? You've actually, talking about what we're talking about is obviously straight away, obviously reminded me that this uh, this course is there. So, um, eat, sleep, look, eat, repeat. I eat, sleep, think, that. repeat. That T-shirt my wife printed for me for Christmas. Uh, <laughs> beep, beep, dig, repeat is on that. Yeah. Uh, I always wear it out when I go big in because it is my lucky top. Um Shout out to my wife Laura. Uh, thank you. Um, and I wear it out quite often. Any time you want to text to me, and we always keep the fight to me when we got our top on. Well, I got it on. The lucky scarfy socks. But no, it's um. As I say, Dave, at the end of the day, it's all about everybody trying to come together. What you what you're fighting at the minute, Dave, with landing Britain, is that you've got one man owning. A thousand acres of land, and um, we don't really we don't agree with that. Do we? He's never going to cover it every in a million years. Mm -hmm. It's um, so I would say go back then, go back to the children, for instance. That's something that I can't talk about again, but that's something that that will everybody will appreciate. Literally. Yeah. yeah. Everybody in the Madden Tag industry. Well, I hope they will appreciate it. Anyway, I can't say as well, but I really hope they will. Uh, so then again, I look at it from so many different perspectives. So many avenues we can go down with what we've got coming out as well. Mm -hmm. so, how, how many years have you actually both been metal detected now? Me? I started, I was in Libya. About eight years on and off myself. Yeah. And what about you, Karen? Believe it or not, since September last year, so it hasn't even been a year for me yet. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so he's obviously your, your lucky charm anyway, uh, oh, Craig. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't, or have you actually had the uh, the Celtic Stag logo tattooed yet? No, that's something oh, actually yeah, he's yeah. spoken about, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> thinking, like, I said, but I, I got like I'm full of tattoos anyway. It's, um, like I got, you know, I have Greek god beer um, on my arm, Greek god this year, um, which is quite actually lines up with the Bronze Age. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, I'll just go back to go back to the story with the Bronze Age actually. The archaeologist white run the half past eleven at night. Um, I was. Uh, and obviously we've gone back and spoken to his wife about this and why these things shouldn't be there they're not right he doesn't have that so she said to me she's not going she says like um i don't want to give her name out um she said to me you were back you have literally destroyed my book excuse me she said you have ruined my book how have i ruined your book <laughs> she said, because what you found doesn't add up to where it should be. Yeah. It does not add up at all. So she said, I don't read my book. I said, please do me a favor, don't add us in the book, please, because I want to write my own book one day. <laughs> 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 she was quite crude, man. And not being honest, she was generally crude with it as well. Um, it was more than you messed my book up. I'm not going to uh, swear on the show, but it was quite a few languages sworn about. Yeah. Um, so I give the phone to my wife. Thank you. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I was dealing with it, but she was really after that. Then we after we got the initial stage, she was really, really intrigued and started finding me the questions, etc. 
Um, mm. Everybody was asking the same question. Did you find any bone matter or did you find any, was there any, uh, any bones in the ground? Was there any, um, I don't know, it was just the yes, thing. That's the thing is, down here, the, the ground is very acidic, so anything from that time period anyway, even down would be Gone. dissolved basically. But well, yeah. what is strange there, what confused the archaeologists there, it was one of the items there was a thousand years older than the rest. Wow. Yeah. A thousand, a millennium. So have they been there for have they been there for two millennium? Have they been there for a millennium? We don't know. Yeah. That's a big question. Yeah, it's um, our, from my perspective, to be honest, it, my, all I would love to find, and I hope I will find it one day, would be the connection between the Bronze Age and the Iron Age. When, oh, did, yeah. when did they switch oh, over? Because nobody really knows when it switched. Yeah, I'm with you. Would yeah, you good question. Just like the, 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 it is a very great area because, for instance, people say, Oh, we got um, Iron Age, then we got Celtic, um, but the Celtic people were just really a bunch. It's not, it was not, it was a nickname from the Greeks, yeah, it was a nickname from the Greeks. The Celtic, yeah. uh, but you've got to look at it. But I would love to find basically open up a bit of ground and find. Iron Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age. Yeah, it yeah. In that collective group of items, we change the, the the timeline of a lot of different eras, really. Yeah, so they could that would be fascinating, certainly. And I, and I wonder if, obviously, um, the country was more one back then. It wasn't um, England, oh, right. Wales, Scotland. So yeah. would there be a um, a difference in the timeline from East Anglia to? West Wales, for instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is it. We were only a very short distance from the coast. Yeah. We were, we, we, the coast was, we were 15 miles away from the coastline. Um, yeah. The land. What I was hoping mm. to fight basically would be, which I can't, I can't say, I nearly said then, but we did. But I can't say what we did fight. Um, yeah. Where, where are you based? Are you actually? Did I hear you say earlier that you're based in Neath? Yes. Yeah. I was in our and yes. a half, 40 minutes drive to where we actually found it. So I was using a thousand pound a month in yeah. Wales. A lot of diesel years. Back and forth. But it's worth it. It shows. And that you both work full time as well. Yeah. This is what we do full time as well now. I work my job on the second part. It was. I was a senior. I was a senior contracts manager for a company called Park Hollab. In doing the opposite to what we do is knocking down buildings. Um, huh. And I used to actually take my detector on site. And I remember my father coming on site one day, and a couple of lads stitched me up. Where's Craig? Um, he'd been what's all you all to the background? I don't know that. Where's your detector, Craig? In my boot. Get it. So I was expecting a good ball again. Oh, let's go for this. And let's have a look at some of the fight. I think I found more money on the school ground than I did actually for my wages. <laughs> but we had a good, so I, I left the demolition site and I thought I still get money from the uh, demolition to uh, my father's collection. But we do this full time now because we want to dedicate more time to children as well. And I guess what we are, what we are offering in the near future is for every so the new beginners in the man detecting. They're not saying that we're experts far from it. But I know how intimidating it is to want to rally and uh, not having what's doing. And, and you've got everybody else out there with a the detector. I'm like, wait, did this signal, that signal, that signal? Just yeah. signal. Just say no, very intimidating. But what we are offering is we're going to take 10 to 20 people so we can literally have one to one and say right slow down slow your swing down a little bit take this and then you get the signals right um so they get that intimate intimacy then with ourselves so in that aspect yeah. 
when they do come to have a drink, then they got confidence, then that they're not going to be embarrassed in a way because a lot of people do get embarrassed. And one thing we will not have on a cultic side is bullying. Yeah, fine is a fine, it doesn't matter if it's a coin, half penny, shilling, a thruppany, a fine is a fine in my eye. And each fine, taking up history, you know, it's, a, okay. it's all history, so see that yeah. And I look at it whereas exactly but do, do you know we saw me and James for instance when we went to Slumber mm -hmm. when we were digging when we were digging up our penny um I love finding my coins I really do buttons I'm a fanatic for buttons um, I'm the same with musket balls oh I got like lovely to I didn't really like this until I went to the museum in Wales I didn't musket balls are quite great I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't know that they were they're quite rare. The iron musket balls are fine. Um, I went to the museum with the musket balls. It's actually just a collection. I don't need to go to the museum. Um, and then as we saw this musket ball. Have you ever heard of a gentleman called William Partridge? No. Well, I found a William Partridge talker, and we just can't seem to find a way to come from. Still not enough, really. six months He's still in the museum. And I found a William, William Partridge. William Partridge. So if anybody listening has heard of William Partridge and are able to give some more information, jump on to the Celtic Stags Metal Detecting Facebook group and uh, share that information with Craig and Kieran. There you if go. That's the let the hive let the hive mind do the work. Yeah. yeah, I tell you what I did sign up to the other day with the detecting network. Yeah, very yeah, concept. yeah. Very good concept. I really, really enjoy that. That's us guys. I uh, I can't wait for the. Uh, I'm I'm not great at being online. I don't use online a lot, but um, you know groups. I go on Facebook. Obviously, it's there. But Detect the Network, when they give you the opportunity, when it all goes through, when everything's running slow because of COVID, um, oh, look, there's us. Um, they When the app comes out, I know for a fact and I'll be on I'll be on Detect the Network a hell of a lot more than I am currently. Oh, yeah. uh, I can't wait for that, to be it's honest. It's a brilliant platform. And if you get on early with a good product, then it will take you with it as well. Oh, yes, absolutely. And as I said earlier, Scott texted me in the week to say that they'd hit 1,000 sign-ups. So uh, that's brilliant. Obviously, it's 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 yeah. in its infancy, much the same as Diggers Dips and growing exponentially. 30 so, members a day for average. Yeah. 30, brilliant. 30 and 40 members a day. Uh, like I say, uh, Steve Pett, and I can see him keep messaging all the time. I had a good chat with him last night until my battery died. Um, I bought Steve knows a little bit about what's going on, but yeah, he swore the secrecy. <laughs> well, I, uh, I'm gonna pull you uh, to something I've pulled Steve Pettican on, and that's Welsh cakes. <laughs> I need and want Welsh cakes. Pettican knows the rules, he knows the score. Pettican sorted me out Welsh cakes. So, as you're in Neath, same rules apply. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Yeah. You don't get in the kitchen. <laughs> get them well. <laughs> well, listen, uh, we'll be ending the show shortly. Is there anything yeah. else uh, that you want to give any information out or discuss before we go? Um, just a big shout out to everyone in Celtic Sacks. Thank you for signing up with us. Yeah, appreciate that. Um, look forward to meeting you all, guys, on the day on the 8th and the 9th. Just to let you know, we've also just landed. 720 acres of ploughed land in Swansea and in Neath as well, between the two, all ploughed, all ready for the end of August as well. Here. Fantastic. Uh, but as I say, I mean, we do like to try and engage as much as we can with our audience. Um, we also, if you actually look at statistics, we always try to comment. But as I say again, I just love that engagement with our audience and with the Catholic Science Club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just makes Fantastic. it work in a while. It just, and another thing, just to show, I know a lot of metal detecting uh, clubs out there do allow children. 
um, but they're not really fond of them. With us, we are we want your children to come along. Um, I know we're going to get the odd few people that's not really going to approve it, but guess what? Tough luck. Um, children of the future. So we're going to put in two to three acres of land for the children so they can go in and detect. Um, DBS check, marshals will be there watching them, so you're not going to worry with the kids either. So they can just, and if you're not going to detect that, we got 10 spare for you. Mm. Darren Booth asks, uh, how much are the digs? Um, it all varies. If you sign up with Digger Dips, you get five pound off. Uh, they don't depend on where they are. At the minute, in West, in down in San Diego, it's twenty pound per detector, and it's five pound. Right. Fantastic. Okay. But, okay. Um, like I say again, all we're trying to do is bring as many family fun. So, I mean, also we we'll have a ticket raffle there as well. Uh, but twenty five percent of our proceeds then go straight to autism wheel as well. Right? Brilliant. Fantastic. Um, and, and you also personally, Celtic Stags Group, uh, have their own uh, product, uh, sorry, prize draws on the Digger Dip site too. Yeah. Just to go ahead and mention that for you now, what we're going to be doing is we're bringing out Celtic Stag product not to interfere with anything that Raven Detecting doing or uh, CC Pencil or Pens. What we're bringing out, you cannot buy. Mm -hmm. You will only be able to get them to either winning them at the, the raffles in the rally or if you get them from Digger Dips Price Draw. Um, we've got an anonymous artist on board, they are not Dips. Fantastic. Anonymous and that artist that is going to be giving away every, uh, every second week of the month uh, a metal detecting painting. Brilliant. Personalized one. So if you win it, you can either be painted into it or you can have it as it is. And that's on an A3 canvas as well. Oh, that's great. That sounds so great. You know who you are. I could, I could see me riding a big stag. That would do dandy. <laughs> <laughs> Super majestic. Swing, swinging me shovel around, bouncing around like a gazelle. <laughs> I'd break the stag's back, but that'd be okay. <laughs> We'd, uh, like I say, come, come to one of the digs, Dave. Yeah, we'd appreciate that. I would love to. I'm uh, Obviously, I've been invited to uh, a lot of digs, but due to work and family commitments, it's uh, I, I am actually going to a weekender up at Lancaster uh, oh, yeah. uh, to do some NCMD uh, work up there in oh, yeah. about the four NCMD, or five please? weeks. Can Sorry? We talk, can we talk about the NCMD for a minute? Certainly, help yourselves. Right, with the NCMD, now... I've been, I've been talking with Chris Bailey. Um, we decided that the NCMD was one of the most trusted insurance companies. So we went down to the stage that we would only accept NCMD membership if they were to come to any event or rally held by the Celtic Act. Because we've looked through everything, we've, we've spoken about it as a, as a, as a team. Um, you have got fed out there, not slating fed in any way, shape, or form. But I actually spoke because what I did, what, what got me more than anything else, Dave, was that I spoke to John, uh, John Rigby, um, about what's going on in Wales. When are we going to have more people out on, on the field digging, etc.? And I think the following day, he got into the budget assembly for us and actually gave me a feedback straight away. Yeah. Mm. I don't see fit doing that for us at all. Well, I, I, I can honestly tell you, being in the um, involved in the sidelines of the NCMD, let's say, the work that they do and the commitment that the people behind the scenes actually uh, offer, it, it's for, for people who don't see what's going on. Uh, it, it's 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 hard to say actually how hard they work and how many people have got so many roles doing what they do not just at national level but also uh, the individual um like midlands and uh, central register and northwest register 
uh, the work of doing is is phenomenal. Um, if, if it wasn't for the NCND, I don't think Metal Detector would be as it is today, really, because they they fought the corner for uh, for a long time. They have, and they still do, honestly. They do. Uh, yeah. they, they, they some of the things that are going on behind the scenes um, could not work great in Metal Detecting's favour, and obviously the NCMD are fighting our corner every day even if people don't see it i can honestly say every day they're fighting that corner i can just see now i was looking at dave's girl i'm not seeing nothing piss myself laughing <laughs> what's that sorry steve pettigan he said i'm not seeing nothing <laughs> <laughs> got it i see it yeah but, um, no then again what people don't realize is it, it worked out two pence a day nobody's asking for hundreds of pounds a year yeah now, Chris had a point here. Chris had a good point on the club. Chris has a good rant, better play with. Um, he fights Celtic Drags Corner in all the trainers to man. Like he said, if you got, you have to pay your card insurance every month. Yes, you do. Do you have a choice in that? No, you don't. But if you don't, then your car can't go on the road. And it's the same with Celtic Stag. If you don't have the NCMD insurance, you can't come out of the thing. Yeah. Farm, it's really insuring sure. our farmers that the cover is there. Yeah. So we have spoke about bringing Fed in, but I would like to see Fed doing more if they're going to do anything more. And until then, sorry to say, we are only accepting NCMD. Yeah. They're probably, well, that... they're probably break your bank. They do a lot mm. of things. We don't get it yet. I mean, if you're tuning in to the, the big man detective show, Dave, you, you talk about it quite often. Because um, I know you're on a subcommittee yourself, Dave, haven't you? Yes, that's right. Me and Luke are. Um, uh, oh, I forgot what our term is. But yes, we're both on the subcommittee. I'm getting tired. And when I'm tired, I can't remember words. <laughs> what we're trying to do, well, I did speak for John Rick. We are, we are in the middle of assessing the Wales and us come on to actually jumping in to the NCMD for four weeks. Four weeks. Yeah. Because years ago they did have a section where we were involved. Yeah, I'm with you. So um, that's something else on the pipeline. But um I think that's about it. Really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I'd say you will have a, I hope hopefully you'll have a back on this. Um, yep, certainly. A anybody who wants to come on the show is welcome at yeah, any yeah. time. Obviously we we do we're in the process I would have put them up on Facebook, but being banned, I can't put the information on yet. Yeah, uh, but we have uh, people coming up in the coming weeks who've been on before, new guests. And if anybody in the, in the chat room wants to come on, you, you're more than welcome. Anybody watching this, get in contact with ourselves uh, personally on Facebook or via the... That way. Big Metal Detecting TV show Facebook group. And we will, uh, we will sort out dates. I know for next week, we've got... Uh, Marky Mark Gone Digging YouTube. Mark Lawson's coming on the show next week. Um, so, yes, uh, you're more than welcome back on any time you want, gents. Again, just give me a shout and we'll we'll sort out a date. Um, I'm... I'm gonna be I'm gonna be knocking up Mr. Gary Brunt because uh, I've been desperate to speak him once and one for a long time. Uh, absolutely hilarious and all them nice vehicles that he gets to drive as well on TV. <laughs> so jealous. <laughs> but just before you go, <laughs> big shout out to Treasure the Magazine because we're gonna be doing the second half of yeah, the 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 horns, yeah. And then you will have a little bit more of Treasure of the World to go with it. Fantastic. Uh, Greatly looking forward to that. We, I, I actually, we, uh, I'm in contact with Julian today uh, about him coming on in the coming weeks. Uh, there's an article that's going to be published in the Treasure Hunting magazine. So we're going to have the, uh, the finder and who the story is about and himself and hopefully a finds liaison officer as well coming on the show to discuss this particular find so uh we're looking forward to that greatly it was that and that was luke's idea <laughs> i can't take credit for that luke comes up with all the good ideas i just take the credit <laughs> yeah well, at the end of the day, it's, it's something that i just said to, uh, go back to that if you don't find luke you're probably doing a fantastic job job mate. credit you 
It's just he's not there's more need to be there. <laughs> Luke well, does. If it wasn't for Luke, the the, the show wouldn't be on because I wouldn't be able to do all the bits and pieces that he does. I wouldn't be able to make the videos he does. And when it comes, and when it comes to the printed version of the magazine, again, Luke blows everything out of the water when we when we publish that. Uh, sadly, this year we were supposed to have in six free magazines out, uh, but because of COVID nineteen, all the events that they were being published at have had to be cancelled. So. Six magazines we will now be doing next year instead. So, big are. ups yeah. to Luke. We can't, we can't put the, well, it's a pandemic and nobody can, nobody knew it was going to happen. Um, mm. A lot of people lost their life. Um, at the end of the day, it's just nobody was expecting that to happen, but it? it was just something no. that happened. And it's, uh, it's, I know a lot of people who've been made redundant as well. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's hurt a lot of people in a lot of ways. Well, gentlemen, uh, that's all we've got time for tonight because I know Luke's yeah. got to be up at stupid o'clock for work. And so, again... To Luke the neighbour. Thank you. Going you're, to, going, you're going to Greece tomorrow. I'm going to Corfu and Lachlan. <laughs> Lucky man. It's been absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank uh, you, man. You're time. more than welcome. Brilliant. Thank you for, for coming on and sharing the tales and the uh, the images and what have you. Uh, this is Craig Hearn and Kieran Slade. I, do you know why I had to look at my paper then? Because you told me it was printed wrong somewhere. And I had to, I was in my head, is it, which one is it? So uh, Kieran Slade and Craig Hearn from Celtic Stag's Facebook Metal Detecting Group. Please give it a look, gents and ladies. It's well worth your time. So, uh to everybody, thanks for listening again. To Luke for listening, a lot watching even. Uh, and for those listening when we upload to the podcast. Uh, take care, everybody, this week. We look forward to seeing you next week with Marky Mark Gone Digging. I'm Dave Sadler. That's Luke Higgins. We're the Archaeology and Metal Detecting Magazine and the Big Detecting TV Show. Good night, everyone. Good night. I'm Dave D, and you're watching XP Team USA. Yo, <laughs> Holy my God! How many? How many? How many years detective, Mr. Marsh AC? Five, six. Five, six yeah, years. Yes, PJ. Yeah.